get a static L. What is up amigos? So today we're talking about static pressure, dynamic pressure, and total pressure. We'll be going through what the definitions of each one are and the relationships of them to each other and then their uses. So when do we use them and why? And we'll be looking at some examples as well. And in my opinion, this is probably the most important topic that we can cover in aerodynamics, principally because a combination of how important they are, but also how un discuss these things are. So they are very important and they're not really discussed as much as other things like lift coefficient, drag coefficient, Reynolds number, etc. So that's why it's very important for us to go over these things. So what are they? Well, there's a very simple relationship that defines them. So we have P tot, P total equals PS, P static, plus P din, P dynamic. This is the basic relationship. So the total pressure equals the static pressure plus the dynamic pressure. So let's cover each one of these terms in sequence. Let's start off with P static. So static pressure. Let's say we have a cube, just nothing fancy, just any object, doesn't really matter. We have pressure acting on each face. And we all know that pressure equals force times the area. So we have newtons per meter squared. So this is static pressure. Let's say there's no moving air it's just staying, let's say I have this pen here, it's just staying right here. There's pressure all around it from the atmosphere. That's static pressure. Now, we often say something called gauge, and this is negating static pressure. So we say zero gauge pressure, so zero pascals gauge, is the static pressure. And this could equal 101, 300 pascals, which we all sort of recognize as that's the static pressure of an ideal day. So that's static pressure, that's if nothing's moving, that's just the regular pressure that we all feel. When we walk around uh, during the day, we have this much pressure acting on us over our entire bodies. Now we really don't feel it because one, we're used to it. Two, it's equally uh, pressure, equal pressure from every direction, so it sort of balances itself out to some extent. Dynamic pressure now is a little bit different. This is kind of like potential pressure, and I'll explain how, how I mean, what I mean by that. So let's say we have an object and it's moving. So there's a free stream velocity of U infinity. It could be anything. Now, we have the static pressure on the surface, but we also have something called the dynamic pressure. And the dynamic pressure equals half times the density times the velocity squared, in which case this is U infinity. So as long as there is no relative motion between, two ob between the object and the free stream velocity, the dynamic pressure won't be felt. But as soon as there is some sort of relative motion, so we do have a U infinity, we'll then get, let me blow this up a little more, we will get this flow hitting and it will start to decelerate. So if it's traveling at 10 meters per second, at some point on the object, it will now decelerate to zero meters per second. And all that kinetic energy that it had will then be transferred into pressure. So I've written this equation here and I've covered this in other podcasts, etc. but I haven't covered it in any of these um, fundamental videos yet. But I just want to ask you, I'll ask you first the question and ask you to pause the video to think about it. What other very fundamental equation in physics does this remind you of? Okay, so think about that. What other fundamental equation? We've seen it probably a million times, each one of us. So pause the video, think about it, and then come back. Okay, so assume you've paused the video. You probably haven't, I never do. But, but let's continue. <laughs> so a very similar equation is the kinetic energy equation, half mv squared. We have the half in the front, we have the velocity squared. All that's different is the mass and the density. But the density and mass are very similar. So the density equals is kilograms per meter cubed, and the mass is kilograms. So as long as we know what the volume is, we can times the density times the volume. That's volume, not velocity, by the way. And this will go to the mass. So we can see that these two equations are very closely linked together. And that's because dynamic pressure really comes from kinetic energy. So we will get this additional pressure, dynamic pressure, which is part of the movement of the flow. Now, understanding these two concepts, static pressure and dynamic pressure, we can now calculate what the total pressure is. It's the combination of these two together. Now, as I mentioned, if there is no um, relative motion between an object and the flow, when we have the pressure that we feel, it will be just the static pressure. But if we have some relative motion, we'll then start to feel a additional pressure, which comes from this dynamic term, and the pressure that will occur here will be the total pressure. That's the, the equivalent. So what's what are some uses for this? Well, the most important use I would say is in wind tunnel engineering. So if we have our flow 
is going along and we want to go think what is the velocity of this flow? I don't know what it is. There are a few different ways of measuring it, but one of the most common ways is using something called a pitot-static tube. And a pitot-static tube is a tube where we have a few different holes. We have one hole at the front. I've exaggerated the size of this just so we can see a little bit better. But we have one hole at the front and we have some holes around the side. The one at the front measures the total pressure because we have not only the static pressure coming in, but we also have the dynamic pressure coming in, all this flow coming in, and it decelerates as it hits this hole. And then the sensor that connects to this hole will measure these two together. These holes around the side only measure the static pressure. So from these two readings, we now have the total pressure and the static pressure. From here, we can rearrange this equation to get dynamic pressure, which is just P tot minus P static, and we have the dynamic pressure. How does this help us find the velocity of the flow? Well, we know that the dynamic pressure equals half rho V squared. If we know what the, uh, the density is, we then can rearrange for the velocity and find it very easily. So we have P dynamic uh, divided by half rho, and then you square root it, and this will equal velocity. That's the major use for this type of equation, this setup. But it also gives us other ideas as to how much energy the flow is, um, is in the flow and how much pressure we can expect if we arrest the flow completely. So what are some examples? I've done a couple simulations on an airfoil. And the reason why an airfoil is very good is because this kind of shows us everything that can happen in terms of pressure. Let me explain what I mean by that. So the first thing is, you can see at the front, or well, this is first of all an airfoil, it's pitched at three degrees, it's NACA 0012, and it's colored the surface in pressure. And the white, completely white, so this line here, is zero pascals. The dark blue is a negative pressure, and the red is a positive pressure. So it means that the pressure is higher than gauge or lower than gauge. And white is just gauge. That's, as I mentioned earlier, what we term just static pressure. When we just want to negate it and just say, okay, static pressure is always constant, we're just going to reference everything to static pressure. So, the airfoil. We have the flow coming in, and it has a certain velocity, whatever. This is actually 90 meters per second, this flow, so this is quite fast. And it hits the front. The streamlines that hit the very front of the airfoil, this stagnation line is called, will decelerate completely. So now this line here, the pressure on it is not only the static pressure, but all of the dynamic pressure because all the flow has arrested. That's the pressure here. However, as the flow goes over the airfoil, the flow actually accelerates. So this means that the pressure will now drop the static pressure because the from Bernoulli's equation and the mechanical energy, energy equation, the pressure and uh, velocity are negative, uh, inf, um, inversely proportional. So as the flow goes over, it accelerates, the pressure drops. And then as we come along, the flow starts to decelerate a little bit. So the pressure starts to increase a little bit as we go along until we get to the trailing edge, in which case it's uh, risen a lot. And now we've got a full recovery, particularly in this case, because the angle of attack is so low. I don't want to get into that because that's another concept and we're getting away from pressures. But anyway, this is everything that can happen really with pressure where we have at the front, we have not only the static pressure, but the dynamic pressure being converted into pressure we can feel. Uh, remember, dynamic pressure is kind of like potential pressure in that sense. Then as we go over the airfoil, the dynamic pressure isn't really felt anymore. And in fact, some of the static pressure is really converted into dynamic pressure when you think about it because the uh, static pressure is dropping and that energy is now going into the dynamic pressure and sort of stored as potential pressure again. And as the flow decelerates, it gets converted back into the static pressure that we feel on the surface. And this is the surface of the airfoil. What about away from the airfoil? So I have this picture here. And you can see kind of the airfoil slightly here. I've, um, let me outline it for a little bit for you actually. It's just here. I've made it a bit opaque so we can see these streamlines further, better, but it goes all the way along. And these streamlines are a little bit away from the airfoil. And again, we see the exact same kind of thing where the streamlines go from uh, the gauge pressure, so zero pascals, which is, let's say, 101.3 kilopascals, which is the standard atmospheric pressure, which never really exists. Like we always are a little bit different. We might be 1,000, 100,000 pascals or 102,000 pascals, 101.2 you know, kilopascals, but never really 101.3 kilopascals because that's quite rare to get. It's always dancing around that line. So it starts off as gauge, then as the streamlines come along, they get 
um, higher and higher pressure because the flow is being arrested by the front of this airfoil, there's some resistance. So some of the dynamic pressure is being converted into static pressure. Then as we go over the airfoil, again, the air, the air um, accelerates. So that means the pressure drops, the static pressure that the streamlines are feeling, like the air in there. And then as you get to the trailing edge, it starts to recover and goes back to uh, gauge pressure. So that is what static pressure, dynamic pressure, and total pressure are. Let's recap so we can just go over a little bit and understand a bit better. So definitions and relationships to each other. First of all, the static pressure is really just the pressure that we feel when there is no relative motion between the object and the air. So when we're just standing outside or I'm sitting down right now, for example, at my desk, um, there's a pressure on me. And when you're watching this, there's probably a pressure just on you from the atmosphere. That's static pressure. We have dynamic pressure, which is kind of like a potential pressure. It doesn't really exist in terms of a force on us until there is a relative motion that gets arrested. So we have an object, let's say, and it's traveling at 10 meters per second through the air. Some of the air that hits the front is going to be arrested to zero of meters per second. So all the dynamic pressure will be converted straight into static pressure. And we have total pressure, which is the static pressure plus the dynamic pressure. The dynamic pressure equals half times rho v squared. And this is very similar to kinetic energy, which is half mv squared. And density and mass are very intimately related, as we know. Some uses for one major use for this equation here, total pressure, static pressure, and dynamic pressure, is to find the velocity in a flow. And we do this by using a pitot-static tube, where we measure the total pressure at the front and the static pressure around the side of the tube. Then we can rearrange this equation to get the dynamic pressure. Then we can rearrange the dynamic pressure equation to get the velocity. So now we know the velocity. And some examples is the airfoil, for example, but every object will have some um, situation like this. I only chose an airfoil because it is quite a neat and simple object. If we have other objects, then we can start to get losses in, in there and that gets a little bit more complicated to explain for a fundamental video. I will definitely go into that. And in our podcast, we go through a lot more complicated things if you want to look at that. And that's the end of this video. So make sure to like, subscribe. And if you want to get better at uh, theory yourself, check out courses and links. And if you want to get a textbook which covers this stuff and all the kind of fundamentals of aerodynamics, um, check out the textbook in the link description. It's by a guy called John D. Anderson. It's one of the best textbooks, probably actually it's the best textbook I've ever come across really for fundamental aerodynamics. Uh, I used it during my university days, although an earlier edition. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace out, amigos.